Um, how many people have gone to the Switchy booth so far? <laughs> because we're going to be talking about that. Uh, the switchy booth is a bunch of text, but this is going to be a bunch of me speaking, so um, hopefully different enough. Uh, the description of this talk on the BlanketCon site is what is switchy, why is switchy, how is switchy, uh, and when it's okay to write 4,000 lines of code with only three integrations to vanilla. Uh, I don't remember writing that. Somebody else probably wrote that. Uh, we actually kind of like changed the talk a lot while we were writing it, but that description is still kind of okay. And uh, it's kind of the new title slide from there. So it's like, it's changed, but it's not changed too much. So I think it'll be fine. I just stole the bald head because I couldn't figure out what else to put on this head. Oh. Yeah, this is just a shitty skin edit that I made because I thought I was gonna do a lore character for <laughs> Minecraft server. Um, oh. Make sure to not use voice chat. There's an event right now. Do not voice chat. Two hundred dollar fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'm still kind of warming up. Um. No. Yeah. No. That's okay. We're gonna get into this in a bit. Uh, in a regular presentation, I would normally like scan people's faces to check if my jokes are funny. I cannot do that in Minecraft. Sadly. <laughs> Um, you can probably actually like press K to do the funny little hearts, uh, if something is funny. I guess that's the same without like blatantly making a mess of the audio space. Um, but there are also hearts, so I guess you should probably also do that when something is nice or meaningful to you, which I'm sure will not get confusing at all. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, I think that's probably everybody. All aboard who's coming aboard. Um, hopefully I'm pressing the right key when I click for voice chat. Hold on, let me just rebind my Zoom key to C so that I know if I was holding the wrong key, then it'll zoom in. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I'm liable to hit C instead of V by mistake, so that way I will know. Okay, excellent. Uh, let's actually get started. So, um, this is Switchy, not reinventing the wheel versus Predator, uh, how to scam everyone else to write the mod parts of your mod for you. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of a long title. Um, so breaking it down, Switchy is an extensible preset system for Player Dotto. Uh, it also does nothing at all. Um, so we're going to talk about it uh, and its development. And there will be a Q&A after the presentation, so please hold any and all questions. I'm not going to read chat. Do not try. <laughs> um, so let's kind of like try and break down this long title uh, to kind of answer the question of like, how do you make a, like a mod like Switchy? Uh, so I think you got to kind of follow some ground rules for that. So rule one uh, is no personal questions. When writing a mod, don't pry into the use cases of the players and developers using it. Uh, even if that developer is yourself, uh, keep it general. You know, keep things general. You never know what you're going to want to use something for. Uh, anyone can use Switchy because Switchy doesn't really ask anything about its users. Uh, so in this presentation, please also don't ask anything about me. This is not a presentation about me, or us, or any of the contributors, so if you have any burning personal questions, please ask them never. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, yes, this is kind of a trick slide. Uh, that's also a presentation disclaimer. But it's, it's still useful, uh, without other way. So, uh, rule two is don't reinvent the wheel. So basically just make use of others' work and expertise. So, <laughs> thank you. Uh, we do software engineering professionally. Um, and by that, what I mean is 
Uh, we work in a team with about five other software engineers. Um, and over the last 1.5 years, about so, uh, we've been responsible for building and pa- maintaining uh, one web page on, <laughs> on a, a large server site. Uh, and I think that's kind of normal. Um, I think that's kind of normal. It's uh, it's not a very complicated web page either. It's, it is a web form. Uh, there's not a lot of interaction there. You fill in the fields and you hit save at the bottom. Um, yeah, and I think that's normal for enterprise. I think that's normal for enterprise and I think it's normal for closed source software uh, is that you're kind of using free stuff. You're using you know web tech, you're using your, your JavaScripts and your TypeScripts and your Reacts and your nodes um, to make closed stuff uh, that only you can see um, and only you can share um, well, <coughs> only you can have and you can't share with other people. Uh, and you also like have like 10,000 other software engineers that are making basically the same thing uh, for other companies. Um, and you didn't really get to ask them how they did that. And uh, you don't really get to look at their work very much, um, which kind of sucks. So yeah, I do that professionally. And I think that Minecraft mods in open source, it's, it's kind of the opposite of that. Um, you know, because it's Minecraft, because it's innately kind of silly, right? It's it's inevitably it's going to be art, and it's kind of a community of that art, right? In like changing the block game to be in the direction that you opinionatedly think it should be, um, and there's a community of that art to kind of draw tastes from, um, and hopefully contribute back to. You know, if if you do something that is cool enough and fun enough that other people look at it and go, hey, what about that? Uh, yeah, so, you know, like very unlike Enterprise, which is the other pool of our experience, uh, like I actually can talk to craft experts and see their work and respect their work uh, and obviously uh, steal their work wholesale because that's really what this this presentation is all about. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, so this presentation is, is definitely still about Minecraft. Uh, rule three. Scam everybody around you. Open source is like how mm, tasty soup. Uh, definitely Minecraft, but uh, we do have to talk about Stone Soup. Um, stone t- Soup is a cheesy European folktale uh, about sharing. Um, and you're going to have to listen to me recount it really quick uh, because this is my presentation and uh, you kind of have to deal with it. <laughs> so, yes, Stone Soup, European folktale about sharing basically goes like this. So some travelers uh, arrive in a village with a big pot, a big cooking pot, uh, and they're hungry, but uh, none of the villagers will share any of their food with them. So they go and they fill their big pot with water, they put it on a fire, and they drop in a large stone. And you know, one of the villagers comes up to them and is like, man, what the hell are you doing, right? Why, why do you have this stone cooking in a pot? And they're like, well, well, calm down. Uh, this is actually a traditional recipe that we're making, and it's called stone soup. Uh, you know, soup to, to, to feed a whole family, uh, made with just a stone, uh, except it just, you know, kind of needs a little bit of garnish. And this village is like, wow, stone soup, I'd love to learn how to make that. You know, I'll give you some carrots for your garnish. Um, and, you know, other villagers kind of walk by over time, and they ask about this soup with stone and carrot in it. Um, and, you know, each of them adds, like, a couple of things, you know, when off, like a potato, uh, some onion... Uh, other completely normal soup ingredients, soap, <laughs> and so on. Um, and, you know, eventually, uh, you know, they have, you know, this soup. And the travelers, at the end, they remove the stone from the pot uh, because it did nothing at all, right? It's it's just a stone. Um, but then everybody has soup, and everybody enjoys the soup. So the travelers kind of played a, played a trick on the villagers, but everybody gets soup at the end, so everyone's kind of happy. Uh, and I think this is kind of like open source software, <laughs> in a way. Um, <laughs> no, no, bear with me. Um, <laughs> sometimes you need to to kind of be the villagers and share your code, and I think that is that is what most people talk about when they talk about open source software. Um, but sometimes you kind of need to put a stone in a pot and uh, wait for the code to come to you. Uh, you know, it, it's it's give and take. So, uh, back to Minecraft modding. I swear. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about Switchy. Uh, but specifically, I do not want to just stand here uh, and talk about how Switchy is cool and how it has all these features and say that it's a cool mod. Uh, so instead, 
what we're going to do is we are going to pretend that we are making it. Um, so let's make an open source Minecraft mod. Let's make this mod. Um, we're going to go on a pseudo development adventure. So the goal is plural kit for Minecraft. So this, which is hopefully already loaded, uh, is plural kit. Um, it's a discord bot. Uh, and it kind of solves the problem of multiple people being behind one keyboard. Uh, and it solves that problem via regex. So you type in a message that it matches a specific pattern and the Discord bot will delete the message and then repost it, uh, stripped of that pattern with a custom name and avatar. So this is kind of like an account switcher um, that you get on any other website, but it is substantially faster and easier to use with an account uh, than an account switcher because your hands are already on the keyboard when you're typing a message. Uh, it's much more like signing your name at the end of an email. And in fact, if you do use a suffix only regex pattern, um, then that's what you're going to get. You're basically signing messages like the end of an email, uh, but that kind of works in the Discord context where that, that kind of usually wouldn't. Uh, so the question here is, can we make that in Minecraft? And I think, you know, sure. The basics seem pretty easy, right? One moment, I'm just going to take a drink. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I think we can probably make this, or at least make the absolute basics. So clearly, every player needs to have, you know, some kind of profiles um, that have those those names and things. Uh, Pluralkit calls this members. Uh, we're going to call these presets. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to set up some some commands and a GUI uh, to let players <laughs> to let players um, make. The presets uh, and rename the presets and we're going to have one of the presets at any one time which is the the current preset so you can see over here uh, that we have one preset that has the delete button uh, kind of grayed out so that that's going to be our current preset and that's going to be you know whatever preset is currently having the name show up in chat and stuff like that um, so we let the player kind of set which one is current um, and when we change between one preset being current and another preset being current uh, we call that switching. So we switch from the first preset and we switch to the next preset. Uh, and that's what kind of where the name of the mod comes from. Um, so what does switching between presets do? Um, nothing, nothing at all, because we, we haven't coded that yet, right? Uh, so this this is kind of our stone that we're putting in our soup. Uh, you know, it's not actually useful, um, but we're going to see if we can get something out of this. So a uh, totally normal thing to put into a useless mod. Um, is, I think, an API. <laughs> uh, so uh, just a bit more non-technically, uh, what we're doing by adding an API is we're making modding switchy. So that is modding switchy, which is a mod for Minecraft. We're making that easy. So we, we add an API to make modding switchy easy. Uh, API is usually for other people, uh, but it can be for you. Um, in Minecraft, API is usually for compatibility with another mod. Uh, so here, what we're doing by adding, AP, adding an API is, well, like, you know, as mentioned, what we want to do is we really want to make it so that, you know, when a preset is current, when you type in chat, that's the name that comes up. Um, and, you know, we want to give players those chat nicknames with this mod, uh, but we don't really know how to do that, right? And I don't know how to do that, but, but if I search on Modrinth, nicknames, <laughs> uh, this is what I get. Styled Nicknames by Patbox. Uh, simple but configurable nicknaming mod allowing your servers, players, and admins to change their nickname with full formatting support. Uh, so that sounds like what we want, right? So let's just, let's, just, let's just assume that Styled Nicknames is already installed, <laughs> right? Uh, and that we have access to the ability to set somebody's nickname. Uh, and we can get that nickname back from Styled Nicknames somehow. So we can, we can set some of these nicknames and we can get it from style nicknames. So if we want this current preset to match the nicknames that go in chat, what we can do is we want to kind of make it so that when you, when you switch from a preset, you know, you copy whatever the nickname is currently, uh, and you just, just copy it somewhere to that preset. Uh, and when you switch to a new preset, you kind of apply that copied nickname to the player. So you set the nickname to whatever was, was copied there. Uh, whenever the game closes, 
you want to save those copied nicknames somewhere, and whenever the game loads, you want to load those copied nicknames from somewhere. And you know, you just kind of step through that and you go, yeah, you know, that that is exactly what you want it to do. And that's that's you know, that's pretty simple. That's like, I don't know, 15 lines of code tops. Um, and uh, it turns out that's our API. <laughs> uh, so those four things, just just every time, whenever we want to add something to uh, to switching, to make switching do something, uh, we just have these four kind of actions. We have switch in, switch out, save to MBT when the game closes, load from MBT when the game loads. Um, and that's great. And we're going to call that our module format. So we're calling this a module. Um, and modules are what makes switching actually change something. So what we've made, uh, what I've described just before, is the styled nicknames module. Um, so we, the add-on for Switchy, remember we're modding Switchy right now, we give this module, the styled nicknames module, to Switchy, uh, and then where do we make Switchy put it? You know, what, what is that, that half of the API? Uh, I think we can, we can probably make it look a little bit like this. So, Here's our simple structure. Um, we have players, which have presets. We already have that set up. And what we're going to do from here is we're just going to make every preset have one copy of each of our you know, registered modules. Uh, so in this case, we have just one module, the styled nicknames module. So every preset is going to have exactly one styled nicknames module. Uh, and of course, that's going to have the code in it the code responsible for setting and getting nicknames and all those things. Uh, but it's also the thing that actually holds the copied nickname for that preset so that it can load it and save it uh, and, you know, pass it over and apply it to the player uh, whenever we want to do that. Um, and, you know, that that is really, really a simple format. Uh, again, only four things. Uh, we don't actually even need a way to let players, like, set the nicknames for each individual preset because they can just switch into a specific preset, change the nickname using the normal styled nicknames provided commands, uh, and then switch out and it will just be saved there already. Um, and as a little bit bonus, a little bit of a bonus, uh, because these modules, you can see them here, they're per player, right? It's, it's two levels down, but they are definitely per player, um, which means that if a player doesn't like a specific feature, i.e., you know, the styled nicknames module changing their nickname between presets, uh, they can just ask for that module to not be added to their presets. Uh, we call that disabling it. And then it just will not switch between those presets. So they have that kind of player level customizability. So we just, yeah, we can just kind of delete all of those for them and, and it just won't switch, uh, which is great. Uh, and I think that's good. And that changing nicknames is good, but we still need regex. We still need patent matching. We still need that that fast account switcher that PluralKit has that we don't. Um, so of course, the completely normal solution for that um, is that we're going to add more API. <laughs> because you know why why would we add a feature to the mod where we can just make the API for the mod much more complicated and then make a mod for the mod that does the thing that we want to do. Um, <laughs> I think I think that's plenty sane uh, and completely completely normal. So yeah, to to make an add-on as fancy as regex matching, for, <laughs> yep, more API the better. To make a to make a mod for the mod as as fancy as regex matching for nickname swapping, uh, we're gonna need a lot more API. We're gonna need a lot fancier of an API. Uh, so we're gonna put that in, um, and we're gonna kind of fuzz out what that looks like for now. Um, and you know, obviously this sounds kind of silly, right? Because you know, you, we're like one feature in at this point. But of course, again, I would like to remind everybody that I have no idea how to match patterns from chat messages, trim the chat messages, and then change the display names in the chat messages. And that sounds like a familiar situation, of course, uh, for maybe a, a previous slide. Um, uh, hello again. <laughs> if I search custom chat in modern, uh, Man, who is this guy, right? <laughs> uh, anyway, so um, style chat, <laughs> yeah. Style chat is a mod for styling chat, obviously, but it also has events for chat messages to read chat messages uh, and also transform chat messages, um, just just to, to however we want, uh, which is exactly what we need, right? So let's just yet again assume that style chat is already installed, 
um, and assume that Switchy and Styled Nicknames and the Styled Nicknames module are already installed. So we're really making a, a mod for all of those things at once. Um, and we're going to get started to try and solve this problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new module um, that's just going to store those, those patterns, those regex patterns that we want to match for each message. Um, those are called proxy tags, uh, plural kit calls them proxy tags. Um, and that module is not going to do anything on switch. Uh, we just need to store something per preset. And that's just an easy way to do it because we've already designed it to store things. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to look at those style chat events. Uh, we're going to ask style chat to send us every single message. Um, and then we're going to ask switchy to send us every single preset for the sender of that message. Uh, and we're going to look through all of those, those modules, those proxy tag modules, and we're going to see if any of them match um, the, the, the pattern of the message that was just sent. Uh, and if one of them does, um, then what we're going to do is ask Switchy to give us the styled nicknames module for that preset, uh, and then ask styled nicknames to set the display name of just that message to just that nickname that we just pulled straight out of the styled nicknames module. Uh, and that's kind of a lot. And that seems like a lot of duct tape and a very thin piece of string kind of wiring everything together. But here we are. <laughs> I'm just going to let this play out. So that is what we can achieve uh, with a nice three ingredient soup, let's say. We've kind of put things down and we've kind of let other things come in uh, and use the expertise of other uh, existing stuff that already works well um, to kind of duct tape it together for our own purposes. Um, and you know, like all soups, it's more fun when there's more in it. Uh, like this is just three ingredients. So, you know, think of the possibilities for other, you know, things we can add to this soup. Like, okay, you know, did we really write all of this API? just for swapping the player's nickname and reading the chat using regex. Uh, no, no, we did not do that. Uh, actually, I just kind of like made that up. That's kind of an anachronistic timeline uh, that was made up for a more compelling presentation. Um, when we did start to make this mod, uh, we did set out to specifically solve the plural kit in Minecraft problem. Uh, but on the way there, <laughs> uh, taking this specific approach to try and fix that problem allowed a lot of things to happen kind of on the garden path. Um, a kind of happy little accidents. So for starters, um, Switchy is a server-side only mod. Uh, the client API for Switchy is an add-on. Uh, and the GUI that you've been seeing in the screenshots so far is actually an add-on for the client API. <laughs> and secondly, uh, we don't have one module. We don't just have the styled nicknames module and, and maybe the proxy tags module. Uh, we actually have kind of 15. So this is this is a wild soup at this point. Uh, and it kind of looks like this. Um, and that's because it's been a year since this project started uh, and since ModFest Singularity, uh, which it was originally made for. Um, and it took us about six months to get the regex matching proxy switching stuff working. <laughs> and you know, in that time, this is the kind of thing that happens when when you know, make things so generally. Um, and so you know, we made some of these modules, uh, and other people made some of these modules and uh, either, you know, contributed them, uh, or like made uh, add ons themselves and posted them to modrins that work kind of alongside switchy. Um, and uh, I mean, you know, uh, there's also a whole separate third-party add-on for importing nicknames and proxy tags directly from Pluralkit, um, which, you know, kind of bring the whole thing full circle at that point. <laughs> um, and yeah, so, you know, just, just quickly going over this uh, for people who have not seen this 50 million times, uh, you know, swapping in and out things like inventories and ender chests and experience, um, just, you know, completely different inventories, different ender chests, different locations, different... Uh, whatever you want, different skins, different this, that, the other. Um, moving on, yep, just wanted to fill that in. Uh, so, you know, even the modules that we did write are very short because they're all just leveraging other people's stuff, right? Um, you know, obviously Origins, right? Pekui, 
uh, fabric tailor, trinkets, those are other people's mods. We do not have to write the logic for those mods. We are just kind of duct taping it together. Uh, and obviously, you know, experience, ender chest, inventories, Mojang wrote that. Uh, we <laughs> just have to write, you know, the, the roughly 10 to 15 lines that it takes to just kind of duct tape it together. Um, and, you know, beyond that, obviously, we've gotten direct contributions to the mod as well. Um, you know, up to the point of major refactors uh, that kind of allowed the generalization of the API to work as well as it does. Um, which has been super helpful. And so, you know, just like a good soup, uh, Switchy was kind of built on sharing, right? Um, and I think like, you know, we couldn't have written one line of code for Switchy without bothering like every single mod dev in a 30 mile radius for advice and obviously mix in examples from their hit void themed content mod edit. Um, <laughs> so, okay, uh, just to kind of wrap it up, I think the main question is, uh, did we really make stone soup? You know, did we really make switchy? Um, you know, if I'm gonna be honest, I think that everybody made stone soup and I'm just kind of glad we were there. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. Shout outs to Patbox, Unascribed, Octal, Garden System, Amp Flower, the system I best know as PK semicolon S Drake, someone I only know as Amy, Merchant Pug, and Leo, who all made this mod happen. Shout out to the con organizers for both this con and ModFest Singularity, which Switchy was for originally developed for. Uh, and shout outs to the testers and users who over time made sure that the mod did work. <laughs> uh, Switchy is available on Fabric and Quilt as of two days ago. Um, and the booth is in Cyberpunk uh, that actually references this talk if you find all of the cards. Um, so from here, I'm gonna be taking questions about the mod and its features. Uh, clarifications about the presentation, wherever you want, uh, and anything that's too technical uh, to the, like for me to put in the main presentation. Uh, I'm gonna go check the questions up on. Uh, has that already been handled for me? Yeah, that's already been handled for me. All right, excellent, I'm gonna go back on the stage. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like rest my breath for a bit. I'm gonna pick up the question tablet, but uh, you'll probably see me in about two minutes. <laughs> I'll probably actually have my eyes in the chat now. It was like occasionally during the actual presentation. I gotta like stand up and stretch, sheesh. <laughs> All right, that's probably enough. I'm gonna have a look at the, what questions we've got. Good evening, BlankyCon. Oh shit. Cool, first question. How much is your mod held together with glue, hopes, and the dust of crushed dreams? Uh, mostly? <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, okay. Uh, actually, I feel like the core API for Switchy is very solid. Uh, and it's kind of like that because it touches vanilla about three times. So it's mostly just like OO design code in Java. <laughs> um, so the stuff that's kind of duct tape is all of the stuff that makes things actually work. So I think that's the reason that the core switchy is, is pretty stable is that it's the modules that are all duct tape. Uh, and those are kind of disposable, like they can go anywhere. Whereas the core API of Switchy is just like, well, you have a list of presets and they have names and there's a couple of commands for them and that's it. So it's like, 
that's pretty stable. I think that's pretty solid and it's pretty well documented as a result. So uh, it's held together, like the actual functional end product is held together by duct tape and glue and uh, the dust of crushed dreams. But that's because the whole product is kind of built together from like 10 mods of a mod. <laughs> and uh, half of those mods are like compat mods for other mods. So that's the duct tape bit. But I feel like the, the, the core API bit, that's, that's fine. Um, it's just the other bits that are a mess. <laughs> uh, let's, let's keep having a look. Yeah, that's an important question. <laughs> uh, Switchy Git is the add-on that allows importing um, nicknames and proxy tags directly from Pluralkit uh, and JSON files or using the token. It's very good. Uh, go check it out. <laughs> Not a question though. All right, hold on. We got another one. Uh, a good dev write, writes code to do a task. A smart dev writes code to make others do the task. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> no, really. I mean, uh, it, it's all it's all a collaborative effort at some point. You know, uh, if you feel like you're going to be good at one specific thing, or you find one specific niche that you particularly care about working and maintaining and keeping working, um, then I think you just kind of end up being able to be part of the kind of greater cathedral building, um, to use to use Skyrim terminology there. Which is good and important, I think. Another comment one. The real switchy was the friends we made along the way. Another great question. Does using it a code make the stone soup actually a beetroot soup? That is a great question. I need to try and remember if there's actually specifically it a code in core switchy or one of the add-ons somewhere, or whether that's just the other mods we made, because I it's it's some of it. Okay, technically the original switchy stuff had code ripped from Drogtor, which is still an unascribed mod. So that's that definitely kind of counts, but it's not it. I'm trying to specifically remember if there is something there might be. If I answer, is that kind of data code? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I we really would not be able to write one line of code if not for pestering people constantly. Um, <laughs> so uh, I think you know, no matter what, there is contributions from from 50, 60 people just by being bothered. <laughs> All code has edit code. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's have a look. How difficult is it to give a mod compatibility with switchy profile switching? That's an excellent question. That's, I feel like somebody asked this question, like, I feel like I have a plant in the audience that's specifically asking a question that's like made for me to answer and look good about. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, uh, the answer is not very difficult. Uh, if you already know how to make mods that depend on other mods in general, the process of making a switchy module is about five to 15 lines of code, uh, because it literally is just, what do you do on switch in? What do you do on switch out? And where do you save the data? Um, most mods already have to save their data somewhere. Um, <laughs> like they have a serializer already in themselves, which means that you can just kind of like nick that and use it for your saving and loading. Uh, and anyone who's familiar with like Minecraft mods in general likely knows that serializing and state swapping is often the same thing as long as the code, like the data does not have to live update. So in order to like implement the switching logic, you can also just kind of use the serializing logic again. So you end up only needing to find two things and it's those two things that every single mod that has like persistent player data tends to already have. <laughs> So it's a very good time. Yes, uh, all cardinal components have to have deserializers and serializers on them. That's a very popular way to add data to a player, uh, which instantly means that you can just run the serializer and deserialize it, uh, which is common enough that we actually made an add-on for Switchy 
specifically for handling cardinal components without having to think about it too much. Uh, and that managed to be general enough that you can actually add mod compatibility for mods that use cardinal components in simple ways uh, using just JSON. Like you can just define a JSON file that says, my module is called namespace path. Um, yeah, yes, that. Um, my module is called namespace path. Uh, the cardinal component is called namespace path. Um, please make a, make a switchy module for that and it'll just do it. Um, the exceptions are basically whenever you have kind of like multiplayer synchronization logic that doesn't run when the deserializer runs, uh, then you have to add extra code. You can still use that switchy cardinal add-on to do it. It's just that you won't be able to uh, do it the data way because you have to add the custom code at the end of the blocks. Um, and that also works for the, the GUI previews that I don't think I actually showed any slides of the GUI preview, <laughs> but you can go on the mod page for that. Uh, but basically modules have the ability. Okay, okay. So Switchy Core has the client API add-on, which has the UI add-on. The UI add-on provides the ability to register client modules, which are counterparts to the regular Switchy modules that allow you to like preview what those modules contain. So the styled nicknames client module can show you your nickname in the GUI. <laughs> <laughs> that is what it's designed to do uh, because Switchy will send like serialized versions of the styled nicknames module to the client and then the Switchy GUI will display the nickname. You can hover over it, you can look at it and you know it's like that. And it's the same thing with the skin. It can render the skin for the fabric tailor module and so on and so on. Um, back to the cardinal thing. <laughs> there is a cardinal UI add-on <laughs> which allows you to register client modules for cardinal component mod modules. <laughs> Basically, the point is you, you can define JSON to add compatibility to a CCA mod, both in the sense of being able to switch things when you switch presets, uh, and also in the sense of being able to preview that data in the GUI, um, which sounds kind of like bullshit, because there's no actual code defining how something should display in the GUI. But basically how it works is we're just looking at the NBT that's serialized directly, uh, and you get to pick the keys out of it that you wanna show on the screen, um, which is great. Uh, that kind of got on a tangent from this question, but basically the answer is, if you already know how to make a mod, adding a mod compatibility for Switchy is extremely easy as long as it is actually persistent player data. Like if you've got a mod that adds, I don't know, like. Void bag number three, like Wandering Wizardry, or if you've got a mod that adds, uh, I don't know, player eye color or something like that, um, you're basically set. Um, and you can either make a mod or if it's using CCA, you can you can just make like a JSON file and pack it somewhere. Um, I'm gonna move on to another question because that's, that's yeah, I don't know, that was kind of a, that was kind of a plant question, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Uh, the point is that it's very easy. Um, the the switchy inventories module is a good example. There's about like four or five meaningful lines of code in that one uh, because inventories are already made to be swapped around and copied and serialized. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, are you allowed to ask ask us personal questions? Um, maybe if you say yes. Uh, I don't know if I'll want to, but I, I guess. <laughs> Uh, does Patbox give you pets? Oh, uh, I'm going to consider that the equivalent to uh, the suggested question on the end slide. Who is Patbox? Uh, Patbox is a server-side Minecraft model uh, known for mods like style nicknames uh, and style chat. Um, and uh, a lot of other stuff, including the like wireless style hover over stuff mod that's in the con. Um, which initially I thought, man, what's that for? Uh, but then I typed slash polydex and I realized that it was also like a TMI, NEI, EMI mod. And I was like, all right, well, that's even more whacked out than that. And so I've gone from being unimpressed to being impressed. <laughs> anyway, uh, no, yeah, great shout outs to Pat, Patbox. Um, you know, having domain experts in specific like mod fields is basically how this whole thing runs. Um, so yeah, does Patbox give you pats? Uh, no, uh, <laughs> to answer that question. <laughs> uh, 
What has been your favorite mod to work on so far? I'm going to assume that that doesn't mean switchy compatibility, but rather like the mods that are actually in our library, uh, which from the top of my head, that would be... What do I have the most fun working on? I think everything's been fun at some point, right? Uh, we had a lot of fun doing Origins Minus 2.0. Um, with our housemates, we kind of put up this giant whiteboard full of like game design ideas for the different Origins, which was really fun. Um, I also had a lot of fun making the, the like proper integrated version of Tinker is Smithing because it's probably the most content-y mod that we have. Everything else is kind of really technical. Um, and, you know, actually working with, like, recipes and Emmy and stuff is really cool. Um, and, like, seeing things kind of click together with actual, like, in-game blocks and screen GUIs is fun because, you know, we've never really done, like, a content mod content mod. Um, so, yeah, that, that's kind of an answer. Uh, Origins Times and Origins Over One. Great point. Um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, why is it called Pat Box when you pat in the style chat style out box in the food? Uh, so true. <laughs> uh, you should talk about the CCA thing. Um, I feel like we did that. Uh, so that probably came in before I started talking about that. Um, you know, you can give me a thumbs up if that's the case. <laughs> or you can tell me specifically if there's another thing. Yeah, okay, cool. It's already good. It's already good. Um, yeah, right, JSON for Switchy. It's fun. I've stolen inventory restoration code from the Switchy for a private admin mod I wrote. I think you should always be looking at code uh, on GitHub and go, oh, that's how you do that. Um, I mean, that's what we all do when when we write mods, right? Is we look at how we look at how Mojang wrote a specific thing, and you're like, oh, they have a util clause. I'm supposed to be using the util clause, and then you replace your ten lines with like one line because it turns out that Mojang already solved this problem, um, and you just weren't looking hard enough through the source for it. And sometimes, you know, you don't know where to look through the source, and you don't know. Like, it's kind of hard to find because there's no, like, reasonable find in files way to find what you want. Uh, but somebody else has already done a similar thing in a mod, and you look at how they did it, and they used a Mojang clause that you didn't know about. And there you go, right? <laughs> I don't know, that's that's just, you know, that's how it works. Thumbs up. I don't know, it's LGPL. Just go nuts. <laughs> Question, uh, is Minecraft modding a decent place to get started with Java, or is it kind of a mess that isn't a good way to learn a language? Um, okay, so controversial take, but I think it's a great place to start learning Java. Um, okay, so you need like absolute 100% fundamental programming knowledge first, right? You know, you need to understand conditions and loops and, and you know, classes and this, that, and the other. But once you're kind of past the initial, I know how object-oriented stuff works and I can write a basic something with Java OO, go straight to Minecraft because like the thing is not a lot of online courses or other people teaching you stuff is going to like make you do something fun, <laughs> right? Like uh, when I did a, a, a uni unit on C++, I was blessed with the fact that the uh, people who ran that unit decided to make sure that all of the assignments were text adventures. Because I'm going to tell you some of the assignments that, that they set you for, like online courses or any programming courses, the end result is just boring. It's not fun to show off to other people they don't understand, right? But when it's a game, when it's a computer game, when you can type stuff in and you can, you can have fun, you can write law, when you can do whatever you want, right? The end result is something that you can show to other people and they can sit down with zero knowledge of what Java is and zero knowledge of what this, that, and the other is and go, oh, that's cool, that's cool, right? And so I think that's why once you get the absolute 100% basics down, you go to Minecraft, like you're gonna have a good time, right? As long as you understand how like mix-in is different from basic Java, as long as you have those absolute fundamentals, you can have a really good time because you get to change something small, right? You get to change a really small piece of code, but you get to have a large impact in the game 
because the game is already done, right? The Minecraft already walks. You already get to run around in a 3D space, uh, space and like break and place blocks, which means that, you know, if you want to go in and you want to turn off gravity for pigs, you just turn off gravity for pigs, and then you can go in and you play the game, and pigs don't have gravity anymore. And that is so much more entertaining than all of the assignments that online courses for programming languages can give you. And you can go, and you can you can grab your friend, and you can go look at this pig not walking on the floor. I made it not walk on the floor with Java, right? That that's So it's like, it is actually a good idea. Once you get the basics down, go mod Minecraft. Do whatever you want. It's, it's, it is, it has like such a snappy result that I, like I, it is good for motivation at minimum, even if it's not, you know, the most pure programming that you can do. Um, uh, John Patbox, yes. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, never gonna give you up. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, I think that's that's me running out of questions. If anybody has any last minute ones, please do throw them down. Um, but yeah, yeah, go go ahead. Okay, people are picking stuff up, so I, I am gonna chill. But yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming as well. Um, had a good time. Yeah, people appear to be still writing questions. So can I just say that was like really good. Yeah, thanks. I can't I can't see the voice icon from over there, but thank you. Mystery ghost voice. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell who that was. Yeah, I'm not used to the voice GUI yet. Uh here we go. Uh, this is an important one. I think everybody should look at the screen for this. <laughs> fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Uh, so much. I'm okay. gonna go tell all my friends that. I've got a. I've got a real question here. Uh, what inspired you to make Tinker a smithing? That's actually a good one. Um, people are getting spot on with some of these. Um, Dinger is smithing is inspired by being frustrated with tools. <laughs> Plug the mod pack. We didn't make a Tinkerer's quilt booth in this con because we just kind of forgot. <laughs> uh, okay, so the thing that inspired us to make Tinkerer's smithing is a mod pack that we made called Tinkerer's Quilt. Um, Tinkerer's Quilt is a quality of life mod pack that doesn't add new blocks and items to the game. You can look it up. It's on Modrinth. It's got a stable version for 1.19.2. The main thing that it does is that it adds a, an absolutely ridiculous amount of quests that basically replace the vanilla like advancement system. And the point is that it's like the entire Minecraft wiki, but in the game as like quests that you can like play. Uh, and it's also you know made by us, so Switchy's in there, Ears is in there, all of the the weird queer expressive mods that everybody's putting in stuff is in there. Um, and yeah, go wild. Uh, so, <laughs> back to Tinker is Smithing. Um, the thing that inspired Tinker is Smithing is making Tinker is Quilt, which is basically, uh, we wanted to make a mod pack to remove the things that we thought were annoying, but not really add anything else. <laughs> and one of the things that we always found annoying was, uh, like, losing tools basically like you know when i make a pickaxe and i put efficiency two on it at some point i have to throw it in the garbage and i just did not like that you know personally i don't know if that's inanimate object hyper empathy or whatever you want to call it but i was like no that sucks that's bad uh, and so i basically just solving explicitly that problem i didn't have any like big big brain uh like global game design plans that kind of made that come into effect. It's really just not wanting to throw out equipment because I thought that was bad and I didn't like that part of the game. <laughs> um, so that's how that started. Uh, what is the strangest bug you have ever run across? Oh God. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Uh, I can't say Gradle, that's cheating. I've had multiple instances of Gradle loading versions of mods for the wrong Minecraft version when switching, switching branches, but I feel like Toolchain is just cheating. I feel like I have to think about something that's actually in the game, and I'm not going to remember the funniest one, because there's just, there's just, you just every single day, <laughs> you're going to find something that's, that's sillier than the last thing. Um, oh man. Uh... I think it's something that at least has like the funniest result, right? Um, I feel like Una is gonna remember this better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Something funny I did to bees. Oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> hmm. Oh yeah, I mean, when when we were helping with Pollinator's Paradise, one of the funniest things that happened was trying to get like the speed potion effect working on bees, and then finding out that bee movement is like actually like sinusoidal, as in if you give bees speed, they will just like fly higher and lower repeatedly. Like, they will slam themselves up, down, up, down really fast instead of actually going faster forwards at all <laughs> which means if you ever want to get bees to be able to have a speed effect uh, which we did want um you need to like solve that problem and flatten out the sine curve in order to get it to work uh which we haven't figured out yet but if anyone wants to do that uh, go ahead um <laughs> uh yeah that's a funny book i probably have like better examples but i can think of them like later Uh, have I lost some questions? I might have lost some questions. That's okay. Oh yeah, bees get stuck on the roof all the time. Um, I feel like a lot of the bugs, the funniest bugs that we've encountered, is the ones that um, there's been a, an Ida mix in for. <laughs> uh, how can I ride the conveyor belt into that mysterious collective below the stage? Um, don't be in adventure mode. What part of Switchy is the most important to you as a developer? Like, what part do you feel is the most core to it? Um, I, I don't know. I think that just isn't, <laughs> right? Like, okay, you know, when we started working on it, we want to play Orchid in Minecraft. And I feel like, you know, if I had to only have one thing at the end of the day, it's probably, you know, the nicknames, the proxy switching, and the player skins, right? That feels like the absolute core of it. But, like... It, you can use Switchy for so many things, and we do not cop people about what you do and don't use it for, right? And that's kind of important to us. So I feel like I can't like single out specific stuff. Like if me personally, I was gonna lose, you know, most of the functionality of the mod, those are the things that I care about the most, but it's not really about me, right? Like, I don't know, I made this by, well, we made this by stealing from a bunch of other people, and we can't just like go and go, well, my use case is the most important because everyone's gonna use it different. and. Like, that's good, actually. <laughs> um, so yeah. Uh, if Switchy is so good, then why isn't there a Switchy 2? There is a Switchy 2. You're playing Switchy 2 right now. Um, this is Switchy 2.6. We're currently on Switchy 2.7. That's the fabric version. Or the, the fabric, the, the quilted fabric version, technically. Um, yeah, this is Switchy 2. <laughs> We re rewrote the entire API for Switchy 2. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you seek Banana Man? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, Spider's the best driver for mods. Uh, I disagree. I disagree. I think that, you know, uh, personal taste over how uh, things in the game work or how other mods in the game work and thinking, I want to do this a different way, that is cool. Uh, but I don't think that has to be spite. I think you can, you know, just want to kind of improve the collective whole over time um, and kind of do that. Um, uh, as a break shit and make it cooler sort of dev, uh, what issues do you think are most overlooked in discussions about Minecraft flaws? Hmm. Okay, so this is kind of in reference to like T-Quilt a lot, I feel like. 
that's 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 like I'm assuming this is in reference to us. Um, everyone talks about enchanting so much. Yeah. Um, what do you want to think about? Hmm. I feel like. When you're talking about Minecraft being a flawed game, you got to talk about it in terms of like the way that it makes you specifically feel. I feel like you're always adjusting for like a certain amount of personal taste. And so like, I don't know if there's always the best way to handle everything. You know, like people can have like kind of unoriginal uh, feelings about stuff. Like, uh, I don't know, like like b better and bad because it's full of colors and a bunch of biomes and and misses the point of the end or whatever. But like you know, everybody can kind of do the thing that makes the game the most engaging for them or engage in the game in ways that are com completely unintended by first parties as well. <laughs> so it's it's kind of like I guess I guess if if to to answer a question with with like kind of the opposite to the question. I think that the things that are most overlooked in discussions about Minecraft flaws is that everybody is going to, you know, want to engage with the game in a different way and everybody is going to want to, uh, you know, get something different out of it. Um, and so, you know, you're just kind of accounting for a lot of that, but sometimes you just don't. Sometimes you have to make things that are just kind of for you and the three people who want to play the game how you want to play the game. And that's, that's like, okay, I think like, the, the, I guess the thing that people are kind of missing in the discussions is uh, it's okay to make things that you like and it doesn't have to be things that everyone likes because, I don't know, mods don't have to be successful. They're mods. Um, can somebody teleport that bee away from the lasers, please? <laughs> oh, tag it as invulnerable. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, has this event uh, inspired you? BlanketCon 22 inspired me, I think. Um, or inspired us, rather. I don't know, give me a sec. <laughs> Using our own mod. Uh, okay, so I feel like BlanketCon 22 inspired us specifically. Uh, when, like, because that was before we started, um... BlanketCon 22 was before we started modding, uh, and we started modding kind of in between that and ModFest Singularity, which obviously we made Switchy in. Um, and so I feel like BC22, we were already interested in modding before this, but BC22 was around the time where we started making T-Quilt. Um, and then... <clears throat> Singularity obviously got us to make Switchy. Has this, has BC23 inspired us to do other stuff since? I mean, we want to do Tinkerous Quilt 1.20.1 because, I mean, Tinkerous Quilt kind of nicked a bunch of mods from BlanketCon 22 originally because a great way to have mods work on a specific version is that a BlanketCon runs on that version uh, and then you kind of have a good time. Um, Uh, yeah, so, uh, in a way, right? Uh, huh. If Switchy 2 is so good, then why isn't there a Switchy 2 2? Uh... Mm. I don't know if I have an answer for that one. I don't think there's a Switchy 2 2 yet. Uh, unless you count Switchy 2.2. 2. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Traps got it. Um... <laughs> Biggest mod you want to make? Don't have one. That's kind of weird. I feel like most people have like mod wish lists for things that they want to do. But I'm going to be honest, most of the time when we want to make a mod, it's like a really small concept that we then proceed to immediately make because it fits like a tiny niche. And I guess that comes from like starting from T-Quilt where the whole point is no blocks, no items, no nothing. Um, our first exposure with like a pure content mod is helping out with Pollinator's Paradise. Um, and like, that's the first time that we've ever like registered an item in a way that wasn't like a PR to somebody else's stuff. Um, so I don't think we really have like a big mod wish list as, as you know, as funny as that is. Uh, switchy 1.30 when, um, it's a good question. I think we're already on switchy two. <laughs> I don't know if 1.30 is a specific reference to something, uh, but that's fine. Uh, quark fabric. Oh, yeah, that's good. 
If Switchy 2.6 is so good, where's Switchy 4.9? Uh, I'm trying to figure this one out. <laughs> Uh, uh, somebody already made that joke. Um, hold on. Uh, when you did the fabric rewrite, did you leave in the QSL stuff or not? Okay, uh, I'm gonna briefly pause to talk about the 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 weird toolchain stuff, the lazy thing that we did to get our mod library working on fabric, um, because we didn't want to move off the quilt toolchain because we were already using quilt toolchain stuff, and if we needed to make a mod QSL specific again, we wanted to be able to do that. Um, so the hilariously lazy thing that we did is that we took our quilt mods and we just removed all of the references to specific QSL modules <laughs> and then replaced them all with fappy stuff because technically we only used like features that are only in QSL like twice, I think, uh, like server argument types. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, server argument types and uh, event aware listeners are both really cool, and I would have liked to keep using that. Um, but basically, what we did was we just swapped out all of the QSL packages for the equivalent fabric packages without changing our dependency setup. As in, we were still importing QF API but we just use the fabric main and client entry points and we use all of the stuff that's marked as deprecated in in QF API. Um, and it just boots once you put a fabric mod JSON in it. Uh, some people who develop like quilt mods are probably already familiar with making a mod that's just a mix in and then being able to jam in a fabric mod JSON and it'll just load on fabric. Um, this is basically that, except you're doing it for Fabric API as well by like jamming in references to specifically Fabric API stuff that would normally be marked as like deprecated, but you're just suppressing all of those those warnings. Uh, which you know the quilt people could break at any time, but please don't. I'm <laughs> having a good time. Uh, so yeah, it's not really a Fabric rewrite. It's literally just me like deleting a bunch of imports and then importing the slightly renamed version from. The, the the fabric modules that are still in QF API, um, which was very easy. And I mean, that is because we don't write content mods. We write like, you know, very thin on the ground stuff that doesn't really use the fancy cool stuff in QSL very much at all. And we kind of get away with that. Uh, but like TLDR, we have like, I think five mods that boot on Forge Fabric and Quilt now because they're mods that run on connector. So they were built with the quilt tool chain and not a multi-loader tool chain, <laughs> but they boot on forge fabric and quilt, which is very funny. Um, uh, I, I assume that number is probably gonna go up in 1.20.2 because I know forge is gonna strip out a bunch of source patches. Um, so that should be fun as well. Uh, at some point we, we may get, um, we may get switchy on forge just by the fact that it runs on connector. Uh, Right now, I think it's the server translations API that doesn't run and OOLib that doesn't run for the UI. The latter of which is optional, but the, the former of which is mandatory. So, uh, oh, that answers another question. Will there ever be a Forge port? Uh, yeah, when the Fabric port runs on Forge, that'll be the Forge port. <laughs> um, I've used NeoLoader. I've, I've, uh, I've, I've used Multiloader. I've PR'd into Multiloader projects. I've never used Multiloader for one of my own projects and don't need to. Um, but <laughs> that noise loud up. Um, uh, what was I saying? Uh, I'm probably gonna keep using single loader unless I need to use a multi-loader tool chain because if it works on everything, then, then why the hell not? Um, I've used multi-loader and I'm not afraid of it and it does have advantages, but I'm getting away with this right now. So I'm gonna keep getting away with it uh, as I go. This is a lot of questions. What what has been the most stress, stressful part of mod development for you? That's a great question. Um, hmm. Hmm. Uh, probably like 
using other people's stuff <laughs> and then hoping they don't get mad about it. Because, <laughs> you know, uh, even if the license says, yep, you're good, uh, you don't want to be like a dick about it. <laughs> that's kind of bad. Um, uh, that's, in terms of like things that are stressful, probably that. Um, you know, like you don't want to accidentally be, be, be bad, bad using things. But I feel like Nothing else is particularly stressful. Like, I, I don't have the experience of, like, curse forge comments or being harassed about ports or anything. Um, I haven't had too much of that. Uh, and, you know, like, we don't, we don't, like, stick in too many public spaces, so we don't have to be exposed to too much nonsense. So it's, it's pretty good. Uh, I got another Switchy 2 question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if Switchy 2 2 is so good, then why isn't there a Switchy 2 2 2? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, did they support Minos Revolution with the Lost Layer of Hell? Why or why not? I have no idea what that means. Uh, Switchy for Minecraft 1.30 when? When 1.30 comes out, hopefully, right? Uh, and Catface. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm gonna assume that that's the actual end of questions. We should, we should probably wrap this one up, though. Um, <laughs> uh, so anyway, I'm gonna... Click that button to just show the Q and A slide again. But um, I'm gonna say that that, that kind of wraps it up. Um, yeah, hold on, give me a sec. Yep. All right. So that's the end of that. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Um, thank you for all of your great questions uh, and and good jokes. Um, and I hope you all had a great time. Who is Pat Box? I already answered that question. Watch the recording. <laughs> Uh, all right. Cheers, everybody. I'm gonna go turn like the music back on and take this mic off. <laughs>